Where's a hammer when you need one? So the first step in building this deck is going to be attaching our 4x4 post, of which there are six on the deck body and then two for the stairs. The two on the stairs will get added later. We're focusing on the six for the main deck right now. And we're going to be attaching that to this existing concrete slab right here with these brackets. They have a hole in the middle for this, which is our half inch by four inch wedge anchor bolt. We're going to be using a hammer drill to drill those out. But first, we need to mark out the location of these six with the appropriate spacing off the house, as this will be a freestanding deck. So in order to mark the bottom for where our posts are going to land, I have a laser level set up here with a green dot that's projecting down. This dot I've now measured off from the house two inches. That's the inch and a half for the rim joy spacing, as well as the half inch of decking overlap. So let's go ahead, follow this green dot down to the ground and mark out where our brackets go. We've got our six bracket locations laid out. We've got our half inch wedge anchors. Now we need to drill a hole using our SDS drill. My little helper here is gonna suck out all the dust for us and then we'll get these pounded into place and tightened down. So because our wedge anchors stick up out of the ground about an inch or so, I'm going to be drilling an inch and a quarter clearance hole in the middle here. I've got my center finding piece right here. I'm just going to mark the center. And we're going to drill that out. Now we'll just do that six more times. So we're going to start by installing the back post and the rim joist along the back. Now, unfortunately, we can't really install that back part of the rim joist as it's right up against the house. And we're going to be coming in from the house side to screw everything in. So we're going to kind of temporarily clamp everything in place, then add our screws on the ground. And then we'll stand everything back up and attach to the bottom. But the first thing I want to do with my laser set up is establish a line right here and cut this middle post as you don't want to post in the middle of your door, right? So we'll get this chopped down, make it a little more manageable. Okay, so we've got everything temporarily clamped in place. Now I'm just going to make sure everything's plumb, driving a couple screws from the side. So we've got our half inch galvanized carriage bolts, and we're going to drill just two half inch holes through the wood here and bolt it from the opposite side. We don't need a nut or anything on this side as it's a carriage bolt. It will lock in place as we tighten it. So we're just going to make sure we don't hit our screws that we put in here. Okay, we've got our lag bolts in. They aren't tightened from the other side as it's a little hard to get to right now. We'll do that when we stand it up. But now we are going to stand this up and then we're going to be putting our first cross piece which is actually where the stairs are going to be. And we're going to, when we tip this up, we're going to have that cross piece clamped in place. We'll get everything nice, level, and plumb. And then we'll just add our screws in, and then we'll kind of continue our way around this way, establishing both corners and then the middle piece and then the cross piece going between it. Got a little clamp and temporary blocking so we can just rest it on there. So I've just gone ahead and cut up all of our joists to 57 inches. Now we are going to be installing the joists with joist hangers on the in-between sections here, but around the post, we're going to be adding some to either side. So we have our existing one on the outsides here, but we're going to be adding another one to the inside and then two to the middle here as well. They'll get another carriage bolt through the middle to hold everything together, as well as a bunch of three inch screws. <laughs> So 
So next we're gonna put one lag bolt through the middle as we don't wanna hit the one on top and bottom from this back and front ledger board. So I'll go ahead and use a small bit, which is actually long enough to make it all the way through. And then I'll drill from both sides with a half inch as I don't have a long enough half inch bit. So to fill in the center area, we're gonna be using our joist hangers. So I've got this little scrap block here, my joist hanger all set up. And we're gonna be using joist hanger specific nails. You don't wanna use decking screws or anything like that. These have to be structurally rated. So we're just gonna be putting it in place. I've got my 12 inch on center marked out already up here. And we're just gonna, everywhere there's a hole, we're gonna add a nail. With the joist installed, everything nailed in place, I wanna go ahead and attach our bottom plates here. We're just gonna use a bunch of screws, six in each post, and that'll hold everything together. So because the deck is gonna have a staircase right here, it's gonna act as a big triangle, preventing racking of the deck in this direction. Unfortunately, we don't have that luxury in this direction, front to back, so we're gonna add these 45 degree pieces up in between our two joists right here. And then we're gonna be using long lag bolts and connecting it down here. And that should really stop the deck from moving in this direction. Now, obviously this three inch screw isn't quite adequate enough. So we've got these big honkers right here. We'll just drive these in and secure everything. So as you see, I decided to come back and add a second brace over here in this corner. And now I'm going to add one in this direction. The stairs will have plenty of bracing over there for the diagonal but I just felt a little better adding one right here because, you know, why not? We're gonna go ahead and install this ledger board right below here. That's where our stairs are going to land into. So now it's time to move on to cutting our five stringers. You see, I have a two by 12 piece of pressure treated board here. It's about eight feet long. We're gonna end up cutting about a foot off the end. So that allows us to remove any bad sections of the board. So what I have here is I went into Google and typed in stair calculator and it gave me this website, which are able to put in the overall height, including the decking height, and then what your ideal step height would be around eight inches, seven to eight inches or something like that and it spits out all the dimensions needed for this. It gives us our rise and our run. So what I have here is my rafter square, and I've input my rise as seven and three quarter, and my run as nine and three quarters, and I've clamped a straight edge to the back of it so it can't move. So in order to draw out our stringers here, we need to first overextend it and bring to this point over here, this is gonna be our top ledger. So on this backside, this is gonna be what's going up against the deck, and this is gonna be our first step down. So I'll just firmly press this up here, and we'll trace out the top step. So now we need to actually flip this around in order to get our back edge for the ledger. Now using this method, I find is completely brain dead, and you're unable to screw it up, as long as you've marked out your rise and your run accordingly because all we're gonna do now is just place this up against our edge so we can't move around, line up this corner, and we're just gonna trace out each step as we go down the line. That's gonna show us exactly what we need to cut out, which we're gonna use our circular saw and our jigsaw in the corners, and then we've got a set of steps. So with this stringer cut out, I brought it outside and made sure it actually works because you don't want to cut out five of these very expensive boards and find out they're wrong later. Anyways, I marked a T on this. This is going to be our template. We're just going to put it on top, trace it out. That's how we're going to cut out the other four stringers. So you can see our stringers are fitting very nice along this ledger board here. I have marked out my seven and three quarter distance from the top here, as well as my 15 inch spacing for the five stringers. Now the way we're gonna attach the stringers is with these stringer hanging brackets. We'll first attach them in place to the ledger board using all the nail holes. And then when we go to place the stringer on it, we just bend this bottom tab up and then again, throw in a whole bunch more nails. Simple as that. Now at the bottom, we're gonna be adding 
some brackets for a post to make sure the stringer doesn't slide out away from it. And there we go, we'll just do that four more times. So next we're gonna put the decking on the stringers to make our stairs. We're gonna be using two by six by 10 boards and just cutting them right in half at our miter saw here. Then we're gonna screw everything down with three inch screws and we'll have a working set of stairs. So I'm only gonna put on the back side of the first step because our front step is gonna have our post in each corner. So I'll just get the rest of these on and then we'll come back to the post. So you see, I've got my first stair tread removed that I said I wasn't gonna install. Think you're this guy. Anyways, we're gonna install this post at the bottom. This is gonna hold our handrail as well as anchor the bottom of the stairs in place so they can't move around. We're gonna be doing that again with these post holding brackets and our wedge anchors. Then after we're done attaching the post to the bottom, it's nice and plumb, we're gonna attach carriage bolts to the side of the stringer so it can't move. After that's all done, we're gonna take that first tread and we're gonna cut it around our post here so it looks very nice. So here we are inside at the table saw and I have the stack of one by eight material here. That's because we're gonna be adding a kick plate to the front of the stairs. If you don't want it, just leave it open. Now I had to get this special one by eight material as that distance is six and a quarter and standard fence boards are five and a half. At any rate, let's chop these to width and get them screwed on. Okay, the stairs are done. We're gonna move on to the decking. But before we get to the center part of the decking, I am gonna be installing a pitcher frame around the center decking. That just simply means we're gonna put a border around the whole thing and have 45s in the corner. So for my first board, it's gonna be the front and back. We're just gonna put the 45 right on the end because it is a full width 120 inch board. And then we'll just notch around the three posts There it is, we got all the boards in place. I had to wedge a few with the crowbar, but we got it done. This piece on the end here needed a quarter inch ripped off the entire length of it, but all in all, pretty good fit. Now I didn't leave a gap between any of these as when these dry out, they are going to shrink, giving a bit of a gap for the water runoff. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two screws into every joist. So now on to mounting our handrails. As you see, I've got this bottom piece laid out along the stairs as it's gonna stay as close to the stairs as possible, giving us a little bit of gap up here at the upper platform. Now this is gonna get attached on both ends with these brackets right here, which are about an eighth of an inch thick on the end. So I'll get my measurements by just marking against the post, cutting that at the miter saw, and we'll cut about a quarter inch off, you know, eighth of an inch at each end. That'll leave us room for our brackets. Then I'm gonna go ahead and start drilling my holes for my three quarter inch round aluminum ballisters. And then we'll do the same thing on the top, assemble that, and then we'll mount it with these brackets. So the spacing you want between ballisters is four inches, but because of the angle of this, it works out to five inches. Now I'm gonna have three inches extra on the end, so I'm just gonna move everything over one inch. So we're gonna start at four inch, nine inch, 14 inch, and so on like that. Now with my combination square set to three quarters of an inch, we'll mark the center of the board and then we'll use my awl to put a divot in the board so our bit doesn't wander and then we'll 
put this up on the stairs and drill out our three quarter inch holes. So what I've got here is the bottom rail clamped to the post at the bottom and then up here, that way it can't move around as we're drilling for the spindles. Now drilling for the spindles, I have a self feeding spade bit here. This is three quarter inch and we're gonna be drilling about an inch and a quarter down to make room for the spindle. Now I have this configured like this as I think it's gonna be the best way that I can keep my drill perfectly plumb up and down. So we'll see how this goes. Next, I'm going to install these brackets on our top and bottom rail. And because these are on an angle, I'm going to be installing them with one short screw and one three inch screw. So we'll just slide it up like that. You see, I notched the bottom here so they sit a little more flush. I'm driving the three inch screw there and the short one there. So now we're going to get our bottom rail mounted to our top and bottom post. We're going to be using these inch and a half Torx head screws that came with the bracket kit here. So we'll put this on, get our ballisters loosely put in, then we'll put the top one on and then screw that to the post as well. So we're inside at my drill press and you see I have a temporary fence right here. This is set to three quarters to the center. So the middle of our two by four here and I just have marked out every four inches on all my different boards we're gonna use for all of our ballisters. And this is just, I think a 20 mil bit. It's a little bit sloppy for the three quarter ballister to just fit right in. It's not gonna to be too tight. And I have my depth stop set to go down an inch into the two by four. Now, this is the way I would have loved to do the stairs, but it's on an angle and it's all funky and this table doesn't tilt. But yeah, this is the way you wanna do it. We're gonna rip through these with dust collection on hand. So to install our railings, I've got these little blocks on the bottom, which space the bottom rail two inches off. And then I've also marked up here 39 and a half inches as our baluster rails are 32 inches long and they're into the two by four one inch. So we'll go ahead, place this right here and screw it in. Next, I'm going to place the balusters in all the holes. Next, we'll set the top rail and just try to get them all in the hole at the same time. Now we'll just screw it into place. So the last thing to do to this deck before it's completely done is to chop off these posts, which I left a little bit long intentionally, and then cap them with these nice solar lights. Damn, I'm good.